Hello, hello, and welcome to In Case of Emergency. We are still trying to solve things. I think I remember the thing. It's fine. But we're helping Red Panda Chan go on their lesbian boat ride, right? That's what we're doing. <clears throat> he sounds like he's trying to convince himself of what he's saying unsuccessfully. Luke's thoughts? Uh, Luke, what do you think? I think you're going to regret this. I think you know what you what you want right now, but those feelings are going to come at an end. You can uh, <clears throat> you care more about how you feel in this moment than the people who will have to live with the consequences of you leaving forever. Look at what happened when Lord Bosque didn't wake up. The whole city is just sitting on on its hands until something is done about it. Cities aren't made of feelings or love or even people. They're made of things. Emotions are just the natural disasters that things have to withstand. He crosses his arms and tries to stare you down, but Alzern, as uh, glare is stronger. He eventually has to look away. Nah, go ahead, have fun. I think you're doing the right thing. It's your life, so it's your call. You shouldn't let anyone else live it for you. Luke huffs loudly, but has the uh, the tact of keeping his mouth shut. I... thank you. She breaks a heavy sigh, like letting out a breath she didn't realize she was holding. Please, just... just clear Electra's name. It would kill her to be accused of her father's death. Alzorin's uh, pulls her cloak tighter around her, is shivering against the cold night breeze, and nods before trotting away down the dock. Okay. Back in the tavern, only Remus remains at the table. So, <laughs> any new developments? She's convinced that Electra's not guilty. Uh, she says that we're together the entire. They were together the entire night. Uh, they were trying to run away together. Which still doesn't answer how Lord Basquia could have been uh, drinking heart, uh, hemlocks for, uh, for days and only now collapsed. West size. We're getting nowhere. We should tell the city we have something important to do and leave and need to leave. If it comes to that, we will. In the meantime, you should get some rest. Crossing the bridge will allow us to reach the base of Grim Mountain in only a day's travel. Uh, you'll want to be at your best. West nods reluctantly as he raises from his seat. Before he leaves, he's given a uh, give. He gives you a meaningful look from over the table. I'm heading up to my room. Oh. Well, then I'm finally going to go track down my book. See ya. As you get up to leave, Remus tells you, Good work today, Chiron. Remus uh, praises you with an approving eye. Th thanks? Confused? What you're doing may not seem like it now, but these are the skills that befit a sword bearer such as yourself. Asking questions and breaking into homes? <laughs> Problem solving. I don't know. It doesn't feel like I'm solving anything. Remus chuckles at that, his smile revealing a wolfish uh, a grin. There's no denying that the guy has aged well. He's got that classic movie star charisma going for him. The kind that makes you feel starstruck uh, to be in his presence. By the way, no one noticed you in town. Why doesn't anyone recognize the king? Remus laughs, uh, tapping the uh, circlet around his head. You're very observant, Chiron. You can't help but smile with pride, your pulse quickening a little. The crown helps. It's enchanted, you see. Try it. He moves the circuit from his head and passes it to you. It's made of a lightweight metal and feels almost flimsy in your hands. When you try to place it atop your head, it's impossible for you to make it fit. It springs off your head like it's made of cheap aluminum. As you hand it back, you notice that several people in the tavern have turned uh, towards your table, whispering amongst themselves. 
When Remus replaces the circlet circlet around his head, the whispering subsides, and the people blink as they readjust their gaze towards their drinks. What happened? It's quite heavy for me, but it's too light to fit on anyone else's head. Much like your sword, you're the only one that can remove it from whatever it's placed. It makes the wearer invisible. Uh, not unvisible, as in not visible, but simply unseen. The best ruler has been judged by when the best ruler should be judged and seen by their deeds, not their persons. Okay. Like people can see you without realizing who you are? Very good. If you can imagine a painting, one doesn't need to know that the painting's artist exists to appreciate it. After all, the best art is universal, without identifiable traits. <laughs> that doesn't mean that the artist doesn't exist. The art could not exist without him. But that the artist remains, uh, remains uh, latent, hidden in the background. The crown helps me do just that. I, I want to... But Wes... Yeah, okay. Ah! Oh. Remus has a way of making things sound important and true. Maybe he knows something you don't. The sound of shuffling upstairs interrupts your train of thoughts, um, reminding you of the look Wes gave you. You glance towards the stairs. I won't keep you any longer. You nod gratefully. You are, you're racing as you uh, think about the look on what the look Wes gave you before you left. I mean, of course we're going to Wes's room. What do you think we're doing? You knock on the uh, door to Wes's room. He opens it, his expression turning hungry when he spots you. <laughs> Expectations roil in your gut, a trailing downward. Hey, I was hoping you'd stop by. He opens the door wider for you, letting you in. A bag has been tossed to the, at the foot of his bed, pieces of armor haphazardly poking out. You close the door behind you. A Wes looks you up and down, unabashedly biting his lip. No, I was just thinking about you. Are you here to finish what we started? He hovers close to you, just like uh, when you were <laughs> packed into that cellar cabinet earlier today. His breathing is even, his uh, cream-colored chest ri rising and falling in front of you. <laughs> You'd be lying if you said you hadn't been running that, running through that scenario all day. Your body temp your body heats up at the thought. At the same time, think something being um something's been bugging you ever since you arrived in uh, convivience, whatever this word is. Wesley's close, and you can feel his breath against your lips. Hello, hello, post editing Josh, I guess. Uh, you know how it is with YouTube. Unfortunate, the scene was nice though. Uh, we should get cleaned up. There's water downstairs. You weren't expecting... You weren't exactly expecting a cuddle session, but this feels a little... Bra... Bruce... Brusque. That's how we're going to pronounce that. That's what we're going to do. No one can stop me. We probably shouldn't go down at the same time. You nod, not entirely sure what's just taken place. You want to ask what now, except that's uh, that. Uh, th except that he's already answered that. You should go get cleaned up. You wait for a beat before leaving to clean yourself off. As you head um, back to your room, feeling your head, feeling your head clear, you hear a loud coughing coming from down the hall the hallway. That has to be Cedric. You knock on the door to Cedric's room. Hey, are you feeling okay? There's a non-committal mumble from the other side of the door. Can I come in? Another vague moan of pain. I'm taking that as a yes. Did he always have those bags under his eyes, or is that just my... Eh, I'm sure. 
uh, Cedric boys doing okay. <laughs> you pull open the door to see a Cedric lying in bed, his face pale and damp with sweat. The sheets are crumpled around him like he's been tossing and turning. Hey, are you feeling any better? I... His answer is interrupted by a series of hacking coughs. I didn't get enough sleep last night. Uh, I'll be fine. His head turn. Yeah, he turns his head to you as you take a seat at the foot of the bed. I just need some rest. How's the murder case going? Nothing new. Alzora and Electra were trying to run away uh, last night, which actually, which doesn't actually tell us anything about Lord Bosca. Cedric motions weakly towards his cheeks, then um, points to you. That from Ali? You touch the same spot on your face with a uh, wince and pain. Uh, the uh, place you got punched is still tender. Yeah, you know her? Not that well. I knew her through Electra, so a friend of a friend? What did you do? Hey, I didn't do anything. She has issues. She had to be wearing a ring and the, uh, and the hand she hit me with. A ring? What'd it look like? I don't know, she was wearing a glove. Cedric cocks his head and stares at the bruise on your face, as though it might reveal the, um, cut in... Carrot? 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 Of the ring you were, um, uh, punched with. Did she say anything about it? Where she got it from? Uh, no. You think it was special? I just thought, since Lord Bosca's ring was missing and all, you think she killed him? Uh, no. I mean, I don't think so. I just know that that ring was supposed to go to Electra when she got married. It's a family heirloom. She was supposed to engage. Wait. She was supposed to exchange rings with that prince. She was engaged to. The marriage that she was running away from. Yeah. So she wanted to give that ring to someone else. Sergeant stares at you meaningfully. To Alzarin. She wanted to give it to Alzarin? Cedric nods. So Electra stole the ring from her dad before she left. I said before she left. She uh, must have taken it that night. But for all we know, he was already poisoned by then, which doesn't help us. Cedric closes his eyes and rests his head on the thin pillow. I'm glad she worked up the courage to leave. She tried before, but she's not the best at standing up for herself. One disappointed look in. Is she crumbled? It sounds like you knew her pretty well. We weren't close. Uh, we weren't together. If that's what you're asking. We were just friends. I told you, Wiss and I came down here to run a favor for the Boskins. They asked us to recover some relics from their family mausoleum. The place was crawling with ghosts. That's where I got the sword. Uh, which they let me keep as well as the signet ring that Lord Bosca always wears. We had a lot of free time back then, so we hung around and... The Boskas threw us this lavish party in their home. It lasted a few days. Wes was absolutely busy chasing tail, so Electra and I just hung out a lot during the downtime. Of course he was. That makes your stomach churn. Cedric uh, sighs like he's remembering a bittersweet memory. That was our last time out from the void before the void starts showing up. Cedric frowns, clutching his chest as he starts to uh, hack violently. He coughs into his elbow, to uh, the wet uh, timber of his coughs, uh, sounding yeah, sounding worse than than usual. Hey, are you all right? You move up the bed and reach out for him um, when your head hits something hard and under uh, the covers. Uh, ripping off the sheets, you um, you reveal the dark green scabbard of the Boskin short sword wedged under. Uh, Cedric's thigh. Seriously, what are you doing? You pull the sword out from under him, and an immediate wave of nausea takes over, overtakes you. There's a strange humming sound emanating from your own blade that pierces your ears. You throw down the uh, blade and uh, let it clatter to the floor. The sensation stops. 
as Cedric uh, stares at you, wiping something pink from his mouth. It's blood. That blade is super fucking cursed, man. It's a good luck charm. It's supposed to ward against stuff like that. Cedric pushes himself into a sitting position, licking the blood from his hip. There's blood on his arms and a spatter of, st of the stuff on his sheets. Give it back! He says this with more energy than uh, you've seen him muster all day. There's something wrong with that thing. I don't feel anything when I picked it up. You're coughing blood. You're literally coughing up blood. It's just... I care about it, okay? I know it sounds stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. It is stupid. That thing is literally killing you. Sector's nose wrinkles like he's going to say something. Then he changes his mind. Fine. You're right. I mean, if it means a lot to him, you know, I'm I'm a guy that usually enjoys compromise, you know, usually. Uh, <laughs> why did I say that so aggressively? Uh, but, you know, um... Will he be upset -y if we tell him to get rid of it? I feel like he's going to be upset -y no matter what. Cedric seems... Hmm. Ah, <laughs> uh, curious, 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 curious. Um, but like a cursed sword can come in handy, though, right? Uh, but we'll tell him to get rid of it. You should get rid of the sword. Cedric sighs, slumping against the headboard. Okay, you're probably right. The two of you sit in silence for a moment. He looks a lot better now that he doesn't have the sword on him. It feels ironic that there, that uh, something that was supposed to protect him turned out to be uh, what was making him sick. But wasn't? Do you think we'll uh, have to pay for these? Sergio stares down at the sheets, sprinkled with speckled with blood, his eyebrows uh, scrunching together in contemplation. <laughs> that sword. You said you found it with the ring? Yeah, they were both family heirlooms. Uh, they're supposed to bring health and fortune to the bearer. Fat chance of the... Uh, fat lot of that... Wait, fat lot of good that did you. No, oh, that did me. Yes. Uh, but Lord Bosco wore the ring, too. Longer than anyone else, and he was fine. Then the same night he gets sick, he's found without the ring. What are you saying? Why would similar objects make one person sick and another person not sick? I think there's something we need to go visit. Someone we need to go visit. You spring to your feet before the idea can escape you. Okay, we will end the part here. So I will see you around, everyone.